All right, keep it going. One more big round of applause for Alex Grover, the tab and Alex Paul. Keep it going, here we go. Okay, and stop, we don't have enough time for that. We'll get to the applause later, you can clap when it's done. My name is Evan, hi. <laughs> One person has enthusiasm for that. Okay, my name is Evan, I'm a street performer. This is a panel, round of applause for the panel. And stop, enough. Again, no time for applause right now, things to do. Uh, I like to start the things that I do with something a little different. Most people are standing up here, I run from there. I like to, to give my audiences things, give them things. I wanna give away a gift right now to you, a gift. A, uh, let's see, a lovely Celtics hat. Would anyone like this? Specifically, does this hat belong to anyone? You, you forgot it in the bathroom, didn't you? Okay, here we go, here we go. And that's why I don't play sports. There we go, thanks, assist. Round of applause for the hat. Stop! You'll learn eventually. It's like a two-second applause, and that's it. Okay, we're going to do a, a panel on street performing. Are you excited to street perform? Yes? Yes! Oh, I hope so. It is wonderful and terrifying, and all of the things that you, you can possibly imagine at once. I am a magician. Uh, I do that full-time now. Street performing is only a portion of what I do. I've street performed in four different countries, a zillion and a half different cities. I grew up right here in Salem. That's enough about me. I hope you have tons of questions. I'm going to talk really fast in the portions that I do. We're going to do a little bit of a something, and then we're going to do Q&A with these people who know way more than me about what it is that you do. So uh, does that sound good? Yeah. Cool. Uh, do you want to start stuff off? Yeah, sure. Great. Cool. And Alex. Awesome. Uh, so that's Evan. Give a round of applause for Evan. Enough. Evan Northrup, magician. And so we also have Monty Hill, baritone and ball in the house. Woo! Yeah. He was a late addition to our panel, but here before the show and very willing to be around. So we appreciate that, Monty. Uh, then we have Amanda Cornaglia from Flow Voice, performs with Snow Day and produces with Clear Harmonies. Yes. Did I get that all right? You did. OK, you awesome. Did. Ooh, whoa, nice voice for this. That was awesome. <laughs> do you do po podcasts? It sounds like a podcast voice. I don't, I don't know. Mm, it's yeah, all Caleb yeah. doing that. We're taping this now, so it's now a podcast. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sarah Mercedes, vocal percussion from Upper Structure. Hi. So we don't like you, right? It's, OK, cool. <laughs> Bands, wow. Uh, and then Elliot Von Wendt, music director of the Nor'easters and arranger for Vocal Company. Uh, and I am Alex Grover. I direct the Haunted Harmonies Festival. I'm also the choral director uh, and the director of all the acapella groups at Danvers High School, which is the next town over. So. I'll sort of just be moderating this situation, but we have plenty of experts here to uh, impart information on to you. Uh, so we're just gonna, uh, to start off, we're just gonna go down the line and everybody's just kind of talk about themselves a little bit and some experience they have with street performing and or performing in general that uh, they think might be useful for you, for you when you guys go out there from 3.30 to 5 uh, and for the rest of your time as you sing throughout your life. So, want to take it away, Evan? Yes, I do. Okay, I already told you a little bit about me. I do magic, I street perform all over the place, I now perform indoors, and here's the piece of uh, information I hope you take away from what I tell you today. I'll give you like the three things that I think are important. The hardest thing for someone who loves what they do, an artist that loves what they do, and I'm assuming that you all love to sing if you're here uh, spending your Saturday doing this super cool, funky, weird stuff, um, when you get out there, how good you are only gets you to about 50%, all right? How good you are at your thing, your art, your music, it gets you to about 50% of street performing. You have to be good. That's like the baseline. You gotta be good. And then the other 50% is learning how to build a crowd, learning how to interact with the crowd, and learning how to ask the crowd for money. At least that's how I do it. Everyone else is gonna have different uh, opinions, but that's what I'm gonna talk about when I have questions. Yeah, awesome. So um, I just want to tell you a little bit about Ball in the House. So Ball in the House actually got its start from street performing, yeah. which is pretty awesome. So Ball in the House has been full time for 17 years. And uh, we're celebrating our 20th anniversary as a group, right, you know, in a couple of weeks or whatever. So, but we got our start street performing. We were, 
we were out there and well they were out there and they were giving um their best they were doing everything they could to sing and doing their all and then this guy walked by with a business card and said hey give me a call i live in florida give me a call and we'll set something up and they were like oh, okay sure so they gave the guy a call he actually flew all five of them out to florida housed them gave them food all that good stuff for them to sing a 15 minute set at a corporate gig and paid them on top of that so they got paid they got room and board they got flights out you know, just from street performing. And so then they figured, okay, we can probably do this full time, let's make it happen. And then 17 years later, here we are. So I just wanna say like, when you guys go out there today, give it your all. Don't leave anything out on the, just leave it all out on the stage, make it all happen. I saw you guys perform this morning, I know you guys can do it. So don't make it any different than what you get out, do it out there what you did this morning. So yeah. Great, thanks. <laughs> All right, so I've been a professional performer now for about 12 years. When I was your age, the high school students in here, I couldn't hold a microphone without shaking like a leaf. So the best advice, the best part about street performing is that it's a low pressure thing and it just gets you out and doing it again and again and again because that's the only way you're gonna get better. That's the only way you're gonna feel more comfortable in front of people. And it also teaches your, your worth. Um, right now, I won't sing for free anymore because it's, this is my job. And I've gotten easy, it's gotten easier and easier to demand what it is that I think I'm worth. And practicing being out there asking for money is a good start. It's a very good start. Um, I mean, the best performers, my job now is to watch and report on acapella and bring you these festivals live. Um, and I see probably about 150 to 200 acapella shows a year. The best groups are the ones that learn to be themselves on stage, just an exaggerated version of yourself because then it comes across as really genuine. Because what we're seeing now is people trying to be like everybody else they're seeing on YouTube. Be yourself and then just exaggerate that so that um, the people all the way in the back can hear you and then can feel your personality. Because otherwise it just comes across as a little bit fake. Um, and people will be drawn into you if you're more genuine. Um, that's the best I can do <laughs> right now. Amazing. <laughs> all right, Sarah. Weird. Um. I really love that you know that you shouldn't be performing for free at this point. <laughs> that's, a, that's an awesome thing. Um, I've been performing since I was a kid. I started off playing the cello and then moved on to like singing um, at UCF where I sang with an all-female group called Key Harmony. And we would do outside performances every Friday and we called them Free Speech Fridays. I feel like I'm like holding this like perk style. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, do, we would do performances every Friday outside. And like, I think the most important thing that I learned out there is that you, like, like she said, you really have to be yourself and just trust what you're doing. Because you're already very talented and you already have something to offer. So you're not going out there to find something to offer. You're going out there giving it to them. You know, like don't be afraid to interact with people. Don't be afraid to like be proud of what you're doing because 100%, like that's what's gonna bring in money. People wanna go up to people that are like, there for real and not just kind of like, oh, we're sort of singing. Like, how odd is that when you've seen a group and they're just like up there like, we're singing to each other, but you can't see us, so give us money, thanks. Like, that's a little odd, right? <laughs> um, but definitely just like be yourself, give your all, just don't be afraid, be fearless because nobody's judging out there. The only person who's really judging you is you and you shouldn't care because <laughs> you're doing it amazingly. Um, and to your vocal percussionists, uh, hold it down. And to the groups, listen to your vocal perk because they are doing everything they can out there. And without amplification, it can be a lot and it can be like really stressful because you're like, oh my God, can the group hear me? Can I hear me? What am I doing? Um, and like they're out there moving and grooving and I heard all of you do your perking thing and it was fantastic. So just trust them because they got you, okay? Awesome. Um, cool. So I agree with everything that's been said. I haven't, easy. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, hi, I'm Elliot. Um, so I've been performing since about elementary school-ish. I started on violin and yeah. Strings. Yeah, strings. Yeah, yeah, strings. Um, and then I kind of discovered singing by accident because I, in high school, Ball in the House came to our high school like forever ago. And I was like, oh, that's like pretty neat. And um, 
thank you. And, <laughs> and, um, and so I just, I just fell in love with singing and doing a cappella and making like dum sounds with my face. And, um, and in college, I was in a group called the Charlie Chords, who are here today. <laughs> Hi, guys. I recognize none of you, but that's okay. Um, so, yeah, but um, so now in, in the Nor'easters, which is a group that prides itself in being very extra in our performing and our yelling, um, everything, that, like, every, every, everything that everyone said here so far absolutely is true. Something also to keep in mind is it's really easy to feel like nervous. Like I'm even like shaking a little bit right now, like ooh. Um, but um, know that if you're in the background, you're singing with like your best friends and you, you can just like rock out and just be, be yourself and sing your awesome stuff, whatever. And if you're a soloist and you're like right there in front, know that even though it feels like you're really exposed, that you have like your best friends there right behind you who are singing you and supporting you. So no matter what, you're in a position where you're not just by yourself. You have other people that you can lean back on and you can and can make like an incredible thing together outside for people, for money, which is great. I am done. Um. So I'll give a little bit of a snippet as, snippet as well, um, or snapshot of my experience with street performing. This festival actually started um, because when I brought my college group to Salem to sing, because I'm a Salem native, and I was like, oh, uh, there's a lot of people here in October. And I hadn't ever seen like acapella groups come to Salem that much, like maybe here and there. Uh, but I thought to myself, this is something that we need to take advantage of. So I, was, I went to Wheaton College. I was in the Wheaton College Gentleman Callers. It's an all-male a cappella group. Um, and we were fine. Like, <laughs> no, like, nothing to what all of you are doing uh, today. But what I want to talk about is that we had a plan. And we were good enough to come perform for people. And we performed a lot. But we had a plan when we were going to street perform. We had the objective to go for a weekend and just sing and not be afraid to be tired and worn out at the end of it and make money so that we could do things, other things in the acapella world. So one weekend we came here and it was a Saturday and a Sunday in October and we had our CDs with us and we made over $800 just in two days. And, and that was a while, that was 10 years ago. So people probably carry around bigger bills now, or, and now we can accept credit cards. That's never gonna happen, but like, um, but anyways, people were willing 10 years ago. Um, I think it's still relevant today. And back to what I was saying with having a plan, uh, that's what I try, one of the things I try to help you out with today. The plan that I wanna have for you is you going out there together with teamwork to make the crowd. So there are two groups at each location. So one group is performing for 10 minutes. You have 20 minutes at each place. And the other group can start the crowd. That's the plan. So if you have a group around you, there's already a natural uh, place for people to go to be an audience. So be each other's cheerleaders, support each other out there, have a plan to make money, and to do a good job performing because you know you can. And after today, hopefully you'll take some things out of this and out of that street performing experience and can go do it other places or here again since your passes work uh, for the rest of the month. So uh, that's my little bit for you. But now I'll let uh, these guys answer some questions and we can uh, take some more information from them. Um, so. Does anybody have any questions? And if you do have a question, please raise your hand and I'll come and you can say it into the microphone. I'll come to you and you can say it into the microphone. If you don't have questions, I'm just gonna start talking. <laughs> yes. How is the performance going to work for everybody? Like, are, is one group gonna sing this many songs and then the next group sing that many songs? I guess I don't get how, like, a logistical question for me. I like that. <laughs> Take it away, Alex. 
Um, you have 20 minutes at each place. There's four locations, 20 minutes at each place. So 10 minutes, one group, 10 minutes, another group. And if you want to do it a different way, one song and one song, like that's fine. But uh, that's part of your plan. So have one group sing for 10 minutes, have another group sing for another uh, 10 minutes, and then go to the next location. OK? Cool. Can I chime in on that? Yeah, chime in uh, on that. Don't do it a different way. Do it that way. Uh, because people are going to hang out for more than one song if you interact with them, if you make eye contact. If you just do one song and try to like hat them, put out your cauldron, ask for money, they want to see more of your personality. So do the full 10 minutes, have the other people in the, in the partner group be your, be your hype men, hype women, all right, get the crowd worked up, and reference your cauldron or whatever you're using to collect like make it it's a cauldron make it, no, you're it's right. a cauldron yeah, you it is you were working the not you, your whole crew was working the cauldron by the way pick it up by the way who's the girl the woman in the red sweatshirt who Kayla? did a speech at the end i saw your set Kayla? i was watching yeah no that's um, Kayla. She's yeah a beast. you you did an awesome hat line at the end pick the cauldron up though people don't want to throw their money on the ground they want to give it to someone all right cool other questions did you have a question What kind of things should we consider because we're going to be off mic? Uh, you're going to be off mic. So this, I'm going to start to sound like a mom. Make sure you're taking care of your voices. No one wants to go out there and hear you guys scream for two hours. You're going to regret that tomorrow. Um, and if you do that a lot, you'll regret it for a long time and you'll be 40 and then not be able to sing anymore. Um, make sure you're supporting yourself. Make sure you're drinking a lot of water. And make sure the backs are singing slightly softer than they would when you guys all have microphones. Um, make sure that you can hear your bass and percussion. And I know this isn't going to help for today unless you've planned your set this way. I know we love to do like these 12 part songs. Have a couple of four part harmony parts and a solo because then you have three people on a part and then you don't have to scream to be heard. So anything that you can do, um, also choosing soloists, we always choose the solos that are in the right timbre to be, to be carried. So like I sing a lot of really low alto solos, we never do those off mic because I'm just going to hurt myself trying to be heard, and you guys aren't going to hear me anyway. Um, oh, oh. Sure. You go. Uh, you please. Uh, okay. Please <laughs> um, I guess I would address perking off mic. Um, so on a microphone, you can do a bunch of cool stuff, like, <laughs> right? Fun times, but <laughs> off mic, <laughs> no, off mic, you have to adjust a little bit. Can you guys still hear me? So off mic, you have to adjust a little bit, right? And uh, for your perks, I would stick to your higher things. So like your high hats, your snares, anything that's in your like mid to high range, unless you like you're someone who's able to project a loud like, <clears throat> right? That'll be really cool and it'll carry, but only for a little bit. So you don't ever want to be, have your perk going because <clears throat> they're gonna hate you after a little bit. Um, and I mean that with all of the love in the world. Like I've, there have been times where I have looked at my group and been like, I can't, I can't do this. Um, it hurts. So uh, just, I would, yeah, stick to the higher stuff. Like, make a little, like, adjustments here because when you're perking off mic, it doesn't have to be the same as your on mic performance. Like, no one's really expecting you to be able to do the same, like, fancy tricks. Yes, they're really cool, but, <laughs> but um, you're also a really solid percussionist without your microphone because that's kind of where you get your start, right? It's like a natural sound. You're sort of just doing your thing. Um, and what else can I say about that? Uh, try not to be, like, super, super intricate unless you're comfortable with what you're doing. Don't ever put yourself in a position to where you're still making stuff up on a spot because then like that's just not going to boost you up. It's not going to help your group like be solid and be comfortable in what they're doing either. Um, and it's like I've, I've heard different tips on the positioning of your perks. So what we like to do is because we have two bases my, and myself, we have a base across from me so that we can maintain eye contact and we can visually see what my body is doing. I'm also like a very active mover when it comes to percussion. Um, so he can see what I'm doing, and then we have a bass next to me, so he can hear what I'm doing on top of that, and that keeps sort of the group surrounded with a good tempo and like a nice cushion for everyone else to be able to be free and sing their hearts out and do whatever they want to do. Um, other people like to have just like their meat potatoes, the rhythm section together, which is really cool. It's just all about what you're comfortable with. I would never really suggest putting your perk in the middle of your arc, because just physics speaking, they're going to be swallowed up by the rest of the sound and they're gonna like, it's gonna be harder for them to project forward. Um, so always like keep them off to the side, keep them forward. Um, yeah, and as for like the rest of the group, this is your time to dance and move and sing and live your dream, live your best life out there, honestly, because like 
that's going to be the most enjoyable part. That's going to help carry the momentum. That's going to take a lot of the weight off of everybody's shoulders, not just your percussion, it's just not just your bassist. That's going to take the weight off of everyone. Because if you're not grooving and if you're not feeling it, that means that someone else is going to have to feel it twice for you. So like, you know, just, just do your thing. Uh, don't be afraid to spit on people. Um, I'm notorious for letting little mists out. I actually, this is terrible. I spat on a small child. <laughs> Over the summer, <laughs> let me, let asterisk, asterisk. We were performing, we were busking, um, and he came up and it was super cool. Like, also little kids really like beatboxers, uh, like, cause you're just kind of doing things. They're like, oh, I can hold on to this. So like dance with them, I like to dance with them, but I was dancing and interacting with this small toddler and I was in the middle of a snare and I saw it come out of my mouth <laughs> and totally just land on him. And I was like, well, uh, you were in the splash zone, buddy. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, so, but just don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of whatever comes out of you out there because people are gonna like wanna pay for that anyway. Also, one more tidbit. You've already performed your best, so don't worry, you can only go up from there. Like, you'll have rocky performances sometimes, but you can only go up from where you've been. So just trust that, like, 100%. I can't emphasize that enough. <laughs> I want to add a couple things. Um, one, for basses, baritones, altos. Yes, I see you. I know, you, you exist. Um, so, for, so for people, yeah, with lower voices, not always the basses, but in this case, let's just start with bases um, similar to what Sarah was saying about modifying perk so that it's like audible um, and not as intricate so that you can get a feel for tempo for bases um, you're off mic and it's like so hard to be heard so a way that you can combat this and obviously like you ha may have your own like way of doing this because it's your own individual voice so like who am I to tell you what to do but um, if you're on a mic where you would probably want to, you know, you would probably want to, you know, be more, like more in the, like more just kind of like in this kind of range. But when you're outside, you can't hear that. So in that instance, I find that modifying your sound so it's a little more like gravelly with, with limits, um, dum, dum, that kind of like uh, sort of sound, it gets heard better. And so that, and that's an important thing. I'm not saying to do that to the point where your throat hurts because do not like make your throat hurt. That's terrible. Um, but modifying it, you can go to open, open syllables if you aren't already doing that. Just modifying your sound so that you can hear, so that, sorry, so that people can hear you and so that your group can hear you. Because if they're not hearing the, like the root note, then it's like a little more difficult to tune. And that's a big, that, and that can affect like when groups feel like they can't tune outside. If you hear your basses, if you're um, a low alto, low alto, low baritone, to modify how you're singing so you're just like a little bit brighter sounding instead of kind of down here, that'll make it, um, that'll make it a little easier to be heard. So yeah, and then sopranos, tenors, mezzos, please let your lower parts like allow themselves to be heard outside, outside, like we you know in, with, nice, like with, like with, um, like on, like, like on mic, like whatever, doesn't matter. That's what like people who mix, that, that's their problem, like whatever. But for, um, for, for outdoors, like if there's a crazy, like if, if, if there's a part in soprano or tenor and that you just love to sing, you just love to just like belt it out there, but like you're, you're not, you're only, it's, you're not going to get anything else. You're not going to get anything else from the rest of the group because they have lower voices. It's hard, it's harder to be, to project. So higher voices, like chill. Lower voices, like you can, you can like go a little, you can go like one dynamic level up. I always tell, I always tell my group like baritones and altos, like if possible without hurting yourselves, sing everything like a dynamic level up and like sopranos and tenors, like it's okay. Like don't, like don't show off. <laughs> I love that this conversation has morphed into the uh, intricacies of music by us discussing singing in one venue and then singing in a different venue because it shows you that you always need to be focused on the little things no matter where you are because the little things that you do are what make the difference in a performance. Okay, so you never just want to phone it in out there. You always have to be thinking. You always have to be engaging with the audience. You have to be engaging with each other. You have to be engaging with yourself to do things like switch the placement from back here to up here. Uh, so does anybody have anything else to add to that whole uh, theme before we take another question? 
cool. Does anybody have any, yes, question? <laughs> if you're gonna plan to do three songs in a 10 minute set when you're outside, should you keep everything up tempo numbers or can you put a ballad in the middle? Audiences like to hear uh, songs that they know. And I know in the acapella community, oftentimes we sing songs that I like to call self-indulgent. Um, and they're beautiful and they belong on your albums. Sing to please your audience. If you wanna make any money doing this, do you know what Snow Day sings? Taylor Swift, Miley Cyrus. Um, we sing all of the poppy stuff that you want to like stab your eyes out singing. You're going to hear it's all not, that tonight from Bonehouse. Exactly. Well, so. It is not my <laughs> choice of personal choice of music. And when I have an opportunity to do like my own music, I do weird esoteric stuff. But when you're out there and you want to make a, you want to make a living doing this, you have to sing what people want to hear. So I would say, yeah, stick to the upbeat stuff. If you've got a ballad that people know, yeah, put it in there. But if it's a ballad that you guys just like singing because you sound good on it, your, people are going to just keep walking by. We have a motto in Bond House that we always say, um, it's not about us, it's about the audience. It's always going to be about the audience. Because especially um, when you're trying to make money, you know, not to sound like <laughs> trivial or anything, but when you're trying to make money, you got to please the audience. So the audience is going to be walking by. Maybe you have an awesome Halloween theme song that you want to do. You want to put that out there because that's why all these people are walking around right now. So you want to make sure that you kind of gear that to the audience and you, oh, yeah. you like thriller yeah thriller Sing that please over do and thriller. Over again. please do thriller yeah like we're doing ball in the house is doing a halloween song tonight and we don't ever do halloween themed songs but we're doing one because we knew that the knew what kind of event it was and we were like okay let's arrange a halloween song let's do it and let's sell it so um so yeah you always want to like sing and perform gear to your audience you know, it's cool, like Amanda was saying, it's cool to do those things that your group wants to do for themselves and put that on a CD so you have that forever. But when you're performing, when you're out there street performing or doing a big, huge concert, it's just not about you. You got to take yourself out of the equation. How many times have you guys sung Cupid Shuffle? 50 gazillion times. <laughs> but yet, it's every time I see them perform, it's my favorite thing that they do because the audience literally gets out of their chairs and everyone's dancing and they're all like ready to buy CDs on the way out the door. It's the most yeah. complicated musical thing you've ever sung. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah? Um, not to, like, contradict them, because I'm not doing that at all. But um, Upper Structure, what we do, uh, we have two sort of ballad -y type of songs that we do like to sing. One is our interpretation of I Miss You by Adele. Um, <laughs> gasp. No, it's, it's, it's a jam. Um, but the reason that we do feel comfortable singing that outside is because we know that we can kill it and we can sell it and that there's enough power behind it to reach an audience and to bring them in. And then another song that we do that is a ballad is She Used To Be Mine. And that one we don't necessarily yes. sing all of the time um, because that it's super quiet. It's hard to like, it's hard to make audible to an entire crowd of people. But what we do like to do when we do that song is that we make it kind of like an inviting thing. We want the audience to come closer. We tell them, hey, we're going to sing a slower song. We're gonna to slow it down for you we want you to step closer be a little like intimate with us join us you know um like step into our circle type of deal so like don't be afraid to do that and like if your reps right now don't allow you to have the poppy songs and you have like two ballads and you're like word these are the songs that we came with make it work and like just don't be afraid to bring them in and like make it work for yourself because at the end of the day you are doing it for your group and you are doing it for money and you're gonna have to figure out a way to make that happen for you so like yeah, on that note, if you have a song that you're kind of like working out the kinks, sometimes it is nice to sing it outside, but be comfortable with the fact that you're working out kinks and like the fact that you're doing that because it's gonna be a little weird if you can see it on people's faces like, I don't know what I'm doing. Just don't show it. Most of the yeah. people out there won't notice if you make a mistake. Exactly. Like, it's not an acapella audience where we're all listening like, did they lock that court? No, they don't care. Yeah, like acapella is still like such kind of like a novelty to the un acapella like yes, crowd. It it's like it's such a novelty. Like even just like a beatbox, just a solo beatboxer. Like the like like the general like ninety nine point nine percent of people who are like walking by, even if you're doing like two part harmony with like a very basic beat. Okay, three part harmony. Four part, fine. Four part harmony. <laughs> okay, you're doing like a whole they'll, yeah, people will, people, I know. people will just like walk by and be like, "What? It's like pitch perfect." That movie, like, oh my god, I love. The, 
I love Pitch Perfect. Oh my God, look, it's the whatever. Like, in, like, Do you know Anna Kendrick? What? Are you guys friends, Anna Kendrick? Do you know no. the Cup song? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the Yeah, so, yeah, so, um, like, so, yeah, like, if, you, if there's a song, like, exactly, like, exactly what Sarah said, like, if there's a song that you're still, like, trying out or that you're not, like, totally comfortable with, don't not do it. Just if you do it, like, just have fun with it, and they're not going to know if you made a mistake unless you look like you just made a mistake, because that looks so awkward. Like, just, just, it, it doesn't matter. Do, do the thing. And the best part about do singing the on the street is if you bomb one song and you lose your audience, sing a better one the next time, and then you get a new audience. It's staying exactly. focused. People are consistently yeah, exactly. walking by. Like it Constantly. is always a new opportunity for you to do your thing. Also, um, remember that all of you are present and you're all here and you're all visible. And like that's a really beautiful thing. So own that, and everyone can still see you. So like, there's nothing that kind of frustrates me more than like looking around the group and seeing dead faces and being like, oh, whoa. I don't know if you've noticed, but my whole thing here is like an expression because that's what people can take in almost even before they hear you. Sometimes you're gonna get. It's gonna be awesome and they'll hear you and be like, ah. But then imagine they hear you and they come up and you just kind of look like a bunch of zombies. <laughs> um, but not intentionally because of your makeup. So like, uh, just remember that people, like, you can, they can see you and it's not necessarily that you're supposed to be seen and not heard. It's a combination of both. Um, and like, regardless of what you're doing, yeah, fake it till you make it. Y'all got it. And don't like take it personally, sorry. Don't like take it personally if people are just like walking by or like they're staying and then like halfway through the song, like right before your big high note, your big moment, they just like walk away. Like don't take that personally. It doesn't mean that they like hate you. It just means like they probably just had somewhere to go and they never like made it their plan to just like happen to find acapella and stay for like a whole set. Like they have, they have their lives to do. So just, yeah, like don't take it, don't take that personally. Monty? Oh yeah, I was just going to, um, piggyback on what Sarah was saying about you know that they can see you and hear you as well so like I know with Ball in the House we do like 250 shows a year and so we think I know I was thinking I'm like oh I'm good you know I'm doing my shows I'm cool and then we watch videos and I'm like chilling in the back and I'm like you know like looking down or like doing something like that and it just looked horrible so <laughs> so we fixed that so I'm not, not doing that anymore um, but but like she was saying like you can be seen so if you're in the background, if you're singing, you know, make sure you're still singing as if you are the soloist. But just don't take don't take away the limelight from the soloist. You know, yeah. they're still they're still the soloist, but still project some energy. Still have that energy there that makes you present. You know, makes people want to stop by and drop a fifty spot in your cauldron. And to, you want that, right? As a non acapella person, energy is awesome when you're grooving like this to everyone here. It's got to get out here. Like, I'm very aware of the fact that I have not looked over it this way for a majority of the, of the talk up here. It's got to get out, okay? So take a chance. Yeah, you're trying to hear everything that's going on in your 15 and a half part harmony. Let it go. You're going to miss a note. And then you'll come back in and you'll pick it back up. But like, make eye contact with this person. And if a group of five people dead center in your crowd gets up and walks away, that's okay. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a reflection on you but you can still do something about it. You make eye contact with the people behind them while they're singing, and you go like this, and you go, yeah, come on, right? You don't say it, but you're still doing whatever the vocal voice singing, that's what it's called, thing, is doing, and you bring them in. You say, yeah, come on. They're a part of it. People support what they help create, so, so bring people in close. Go out to them. Like, you, can, you can say hi to them. You, can, you just like lean back. You're like, holy crap, he's getting closer to me. Good thing there's a wall there. All right, have fun with it, take a chance, and just have an improv style mindset, right? If someone in your group tries something, just yes and, right? Yeah. Support them, help them do it, be a part of it. Yeah, definitely go out to the crowd, I love that. Like, put, we used to say put pressure on the crowd to like make them, not make them enjoy, but yeah, make them enjoy what, what you're doing, make them focus on that you're like giving your all up there, and you, go, you put pressure on them, you can go out there and you know, and sing a solo to them, or pick somebody and like grab them up and bring them on the stage. Feel free to do that. Just be free up there. Be free. Have fun. Enjoy it. Uh, I want to go back to something one of you guys said about singing the same song like 250 times. One thing I always tell my groups that I direct is a lot of the times you perform a song that you've uh, been doing for a long, long time or so many times like that day or so many times that year, it's the first time that this audience is hearing that song. So they deserve to hear it like it was your first time singing it, that where it clicked, you know, and you guys felt that, that feeling, you know, that feeling you have when it clicks? Yes. Like 
that should be the feeling every time for every audience, and that's how you'll be effective. Or you're gonna add something. Oh, I do caroling during the winter time, and believe me, when I've been out there for four hours and I'm singing Carol the Bells for the 600th time, I'm sick of it. Um, especially when it's like later in the season. But these people just came for Christmas cheer, so I better give it to them. And nobody wants to hear Hark Carol the Bells, sweet so. And they don't want to hear that. I like, I have to be into it. And it's the same thing. Like, yeah, you think I really enjoy singing Taylor Swift like six times a day, like three times a week? Now I'm a little bit sick of it, but now we turn it into a joke. You have to find ways to keep it interesting for yourself. Other questions? Before Evan just talks. Curdy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was wondering if you had any tips on like jamming with your bodies while you're like outside like if you had any like go-to move that wasn't like the step touch because I feel like I'm really awkward and I don't know what to do so fun question if you have any just um yeah I would like some advice on that I like your accent <laughs> um uh I I feel like um I'm just gonna go ahead and answer first I guess uh but I'm weird microphone thing <laughs> uh so it just be natural about it. Like, if step touching is your thing, sick. You can rock that. I don't know if it looks like I'm forcing it, but I'm chilling. Like, this is gonna be fun. But guess what? If you're doing a song that requires more than this, maybe step touch a little more. Put your knees into it. Like, bounce. Be like, oh look, it's the same. <laughs> but Am I doing it? Honestly, it's as easy as step touch, but you vary it. Like, you vary it a little bit because no one really wants to see you doing this for 15 minutes, for 10 minutes for every song that you sing, um, like, you know? Be natural to your body. If that's not your thing, and your thing is like a hand thing, don't poke anybody's eye out. Keep it in your range here, but do your little hand thing. Like, live your dreams. I'm like, I, <laughs> it sounds really funny, yes. but honestly, live your dreams out there. Like, I cannot emphasize you enough how much I move when I'm perking, because that is how I keep the beat. That is how I keep the tempo. It's in me, like, it's not, in my head, I'm not thinking one, two, three, four. Like, that's so confusing. Like, this is just me grooving and chilling and having a good time. Feed off of the people next to you. If someone over here is doing something cool, do the same thing they're doing. You're in a group together. It doesn't matter if they copy you and, or if you copy them. Like, that's it'll be That's literally fine. where all of our choreography comes from. Like, it's like a mistake that happens in one show. And we're like, that was kind of cool. Let's do that again. See? I mean, and it's really easy. Like, we do no choreography in our show. And then we do My Girl. Again, how many times have I sung My Girl? But the audience goes bananas because five of us are doing this together. I don't, all those dance lessons wasted. Do this Just, one. Yeah. Oh, what's that one? Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I'm not doing that one. Yeah. Don't be afraid to move. It's not wrong to move. You're up there, you're up there doing your thing. That's part of living is taking up space. That's something that I've been trying to learn on my own as well outside of music. But this is your area to be in. Like, respect the person next to you. Dude, yes. don't necessarily like hit him, but enjoy it. Just move however it is that you're feeling like moving. Because it's going to help you ultimately. That's, it's not going to hurt you. Watch these guys tonight. They do like all kinds of different step touches, but it feels like the whole show is different. They're very good at it. So pay attention to Ball in the House tonight. <laughs> and if you, if you only feel comfortable, like if step touch is what you know how to do, don't ask like what can I do that's different. Don't try and learn something new right now. Just do something different with that. So make eye contact with a couple people in your audience and get them to do the same thing. You get credit for dancing, right? And you get other people in your audience to move and now they're a part of it and they get the rest of the crowd to move. So maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but you've tried something. I feel like oh, yeah, even, some, even sometimes, like, it, like Evan said, do it different. Like even just adding an arm up to your step touch, you know, like yeah. to like grab somebody's attention visually, like show you're, you're engaged with yourself and your movement, you know. As Point long as you're not people. out there doing like a so you think you could dance solo in the middle of yeah. the <laughs> performance, then I think yeah. it's good. I mean, it's... He's you, ready. They're you'd ready. You'd be surprised <laughs> the, the difference no, between... No, great. <laughs> the difference between a step touch with your arm down here and a step touch with your arm like up here, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, it can go a long way. So yeah. I think we have time for one quick question if anybody has another. Okay, I'm coming. Um, what strategies do you have for talking in between songs that you do? Talk, talking to people? Good question. Talking oh. in between songs. 
as long as it's necessary. Like, right. I find talking in between songs that, you know, it's like in between every single one, I want to leave. I'm going to be honest. So, like, with us, we have, like, we have, like, songs where we, like, pinpoint where it needs, something needs to be said. Like, if we're doing um, our short cover sessions and we're doing, like, an intro to that, we have to, like, make sure that everyone knows what this is. So it's not just like, oh, is this 90-second song? What happened? You know, we have to make sure that the audience understands why we're doing this song at this moment. Um, we, were, we were at a point where we were talking in between every song. Um, we have a guy, his name is Dave. He loves to talk. <laughs> and so he, he, and so when he feels like there's a second of awkwardness, he like jumps in and just says something. I'm like, oh, we're ready to start the song, and he like goes on. And so we had to like you know rein it in a little bit and tell him like, hey, you know, let's not talk at this song. Let's. So now we make our set list. We have like, okay, so and so talks here, and then we have songs that we just go right into back to back. Yeah, have so, it be yeah. deliberate and have there be a plan. Yeah, I mean, get the audience. Use the talking to get the audience excited. Like. Hey, does anybody here like Michael Jackson? Okay, good, because we have one for you. And then you just start singing. Yeah. Yeah. Questions, call and response sort of thing is awesome. I, I, just when I first came out here in the beginning, it was all questions. Are you having a good time? Like all sorts, anything to get the audience to respond. How about a round of applause for Monty right now, guys? Yeah? Okay, stop. Stop. Like, I'm t you have to tell them what to do. People don't know how to act on the street. Right? They're just, they're do, 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 do. They're, they're, they don't know how to stop and be an audience. You have to make them an audience. So tell them when to clap, tell them to come closer, tell them why what you're doing is super exciting, and then just do it. Just do it. Uh, that's actually something I was going to bring up too. Um, don't be afraid to tell people to clap. Like, to, literally, I just, I'm point at someone and be like, you, you're going to start clapping with me, and then it'll give me like mob mentality and everyone's like, we're all clapping, you know? Don't be afraid to tell them to stop clapping. Like, really, just don't be afraid to interact with them because like, it's a conversation. It's a musical conversation, but you're still doing the thing there. Um, also, shameless plugs are okay, but don't be long-winded about them. <laughs> I've definitely been there. I've definitely been that person who's talked way too much about nothing, and then at the end, I was like, oh, just kidding. By the way, we're up at Structure Acapella. I'm gonna blah, 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 blah. And you're like, no. So be, like, be to the point. Just be like, hey, we're upper structure. Uh, don't tell people that you're upper structure if you're not upper structure, but you know, um, <laughs> say that like you can follow us on social media. Cool. And then, or like tell them to come talk to you when you're done talk, like when you're done performing. Cause even then you can make more connections that way. That's someone who stuck around. I was like, I want to go talk to that human being over there. Uh, don't be afraid. Last thought, Elliot. Um, it's okay if you don't get your like music director or president to be the one that talks. I know like sometimes groups like think that like and like admin person has to be the one that's like interacting or interfacing with an audience get like someone that just like like is extroverted and can like work a crowd and can talk because like i would never trust myself talking in front of people ever like right now <laughs> call him out <laughs> caleb <laughs> roast me caleb wants to add something Your set will flow 100%. If you, if you literally, after song one, you're going to go out and you're going to say, we have a new album. After song two, social media guy's going to go out. After song three, we have a show tonight, Honda Harmonies, whatever, like ahead of time. If it's prepared, your set will flow. And on the street, you have to get people's attention. Like, it, he was 100%. Like, they're going to want to leave right after your song. If someone doesn't come out and get their attention right away, I sang on the street on Nantucket in a group called the Cobble Tones four nights a week during the summer, and the people with lots of money don't care to stop. But if you can get out there and you can say, hey, guys, guess what? We've got this, we've got that. Okay, cool, next song, and just move. Go fast, go fast, fast, fast. All right, we're going to end it with Caleb, and thanks to Caleb and our panel. <laughs> <laughs>